It's business tip time. Whether it's marketing, sales, operations, etc., I'm bringing you quick tips across a variety of topics to help elevate your business. Let's get it. Protecting yourself and your business legally is important, but hiring a lawyer can be costly and or intimidating. My friend Karen Deswart solved this problem by founding her practice, Not Your Father's Lawyer. In addition to flat fee legal services, she has legal templates that are plug and play. I used her templates for my podcast guest release and for my coaching services agreement, and it couldn't have been easier. Head to the link in the show notes and get legally legit today. Hello, everyone. Well, I'm back today with Matt Vaught, tattoo artist and viral TikToker. We did a beautiful interview yesterday that I absolutely urge you to listen to. I think it is one of the most important interviews, if not the most important that I've ever, ever done. A little bit about Matt before we jump into it. He is born and raised in Orange County, California. His expressive nature was first discovered in the art of music as a drummer and lyricist. And it was there that his utter fascination with tattoo culture began to develop. But it wasn't until he was incarcerated in California's infamous prison system that he discovered his natural talent for visual arts. Today, he has a voracious appetite for progress and growth and continues to push the limits with an unbreakable spirit, turning tragedy into triumph, holding on to his theory that limitation only exists in the mind. So Matt, you started your TikTok account in March of 2021. Within three months, you grew it to over a million followers. Yes, you heard that right. A million followers. And Matt, you're quoted as saying that for years on Instagram, you hid behind photos of your tattoos because as an artist, you wanted your work to speak for itself. But you were told by quite a few people that you needed to show more of yourself and your personality. And since you weren't willing to take your clothes off, you went with the personality. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. So a lot of people... (laughs) And you have a great personality too, which everyone needs to listen to your, your interview to feel more of that. But a lot of people, they have a really hard time showing up on social media, showing their face, putting it out there. So tell us what tips do you have to put it out there to show up and what helped you grow your following to over a million on TikTok? Yeah. First, I would just want to say, yeah, it is scary, obviously, to um, show more of yourself and to be sort of exposed and vulnerable in front of, you know, the public eye. It's, it's a very scary thing. And uh, we all have insecurities, you know, and those things will flare up when you do that. And, uh, you know, what I've learned the most, I think from this whole journey on TikTok, um, is that, you know, honestly, no matter what you do, if you're in the public eye, there's going to be, you know, just about around 50, 50, where like 50% of the people hate you for what you just did. And the other 50% love you for what you just did, right? No matter what you do. Um, the, of course, there are exceptions to that rule. And, you know, you shouldn't obviously, you know, walk around the streets in San Diego naked, you know, masturbating, because everybody's going to hate you for that. But, um, you know, for the most part, if you, if you just kind of push forward and, and, uh, then it's going to be that way. It's going to be around 50, 50. And for me, that really helped me to realize, um, that I need to just be myself, you know, and I need to like show people, uh, me being myself essentially. Cause it's like, it fuck. And there's a freedom in that because, um, when you're yourself, yeah, you're still going to get hate and that's going to be kind of tough to deal with. Um, but there's going to be just as many people, if not more that love you for that. Right. And, uh, and that was like sort of one of those light bulb experiences um, that I had with this TikTok journey. Um, and there's something very liberating about kind of being able to be, you know, unadulterated and unfiltered and just you, you know, um, now I understand that that can be scary because not all of us know who we are deep down, you know? Um, and a lot of us have been walking around playing in character for a long time, you know, but, um, if, if you can get in touch with yourself, um, and just be kind of genuinely yourself, um, I, I would say that's, that's the best way to be. I can agree more. I think authenticity is everything. Did it take you like positive feedback or anything like that to start showing up? Like it was scary at first you said, but what, what began to make it less so? Um, well, there's a couple factors in that. Um, so I had help, um, 
you know, blowing up on TikTok. I had, uh, had a, a kid come in for a tattoo. I'm not a child, but you know, she's 20 years old. I'm, yeah, I'm just to clarify, so. no minors. Yeah, yeah, tattooed. Yeah. <laughs> no, no minors. <laughs> um, but you know, she sought me out for, you know, for my artwork and she came to get tattooed. And while I was tattooing her, she said that she was a, you know, social media manager and, and marketing you know person. So she knew how to work social media, which has been, you know, confusing and frustrating me, um, since the beginning. Um, so, you know, I was like, well, that's crazy. Cause I've been needing somebody like you to kind of like, show me how to do this, you know? And like, like at the time I had my first video, uh, quote unquote, blow up on TikTok, And I had like 136 followers from it, you know? And, and so I had 136 followers when I met her. Um, and she looked at my social media and was like, here's what you need to do. And like this and that, and I was like, well, okay. What like TikTok? Can you like help me with a video? You know, and and she's like, yeah. And so we shot a video like a couple days later, and the first video that she shot with me, uh, like skyrocketed, went up into the millions, it went viral. Um, when, when you get a video that goes viral, you get a lot of followers off of that, and uh, you know, so we we did that, and um, you know, kind of kept going and and did a couple more, and then another one shot up, and another one, and another one. And just kind of kept rolling and, and before i knew it like literally three months after we started i broke a million followers you know and uh, wow. that was it was it was a skyrocket like no other you know and um there was a lot of ups and downs in there you know uh but it was it was just kind of a crazy ride um yeah and I, it's yeah, I don't know. It, it was just crazy. But, and there was a lot of hate at first too, you know, and, and she warned me about that. She was like, you're going to get haters. Um, but like, fuck them anyways, like who cares what they say. Um, and at the time I was like, yeah, yeah, fuck them. But like, you know, there are definitely, <laughs> definitely days where I'm like, uh-huh. I wake up in the morning and I'm already kind of not feeling, you know, so hot. And then I read a couple comments or like a few comments or like a bunch of comments, even where they're like, these people are just thrashing me. Um, when people on TikTok shit, are savages, they're vicious, man. It's and so like, different than Instagram, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. And it isn't. Cause like, then I, I recently had, um, a video blow up on Instagram where I was getting a lot of, a lot of hate on that one too. Hmm. Um, you know, and, and, and that can be very difficult to deal with. Um, so yeah. like, I would definitely say, you know, there is. I know there's an attraction for a lot of people like to, to be like famous, even if it's like TikTok famous or virtual fame, but like, there's a lot of shit that goes with that. And, and you have to sort of develop a tough skin. And like, I didn't, my skin was not as tough as I had uh, thought it was when I started. Um, and there were definite days, right. I felt like giving up on, on the whole thing. Cause I was just like, Oh my God, like, they hate me. I probably just ruined my career. Now everybody knows like I'm an imposter, you know, <laughs> like that whole imposter syndrome showing up. And uh, yeah, it was just a ride, but um, pushing through that and continuing to do that um, got me to that light bulb moment where I was like, cause then I, I would have also fans that would like jump on those people and like start like defending. Right. And so like that feeling of having somebody like, rush toward like i didn't have to fight these trolls you know and um like they would they would troll and they would hate on me and then like i would have people just like slamming them Uh, (laughs) doing the bidding (laughs) yeah you know and and what's cool is like when you get people that's another thing one of the tips on tiktok is like being controversial because if you get people fighting in the comments like your views go way up Mm. your views go way way up yeah so, that, so don't like, I know people that, um, you know, they'll delete the hateful comments. Oh, right? I, they, I did that on my video that went yeah. viral. I was like, I don't need this negative energy in here. Yeah. I yes. wish I wouldn't have. <laughs> it's, it's a double-edged sword for sure. Because yeah, it also, it brings up, you know, for whatever reason in the algorithm, it makes it go more viral because more people are talking and, and um, engaging on your posts. Right. And so it just like skyrockets. Um, so don't delete the negative comments, man. Um, just learn to kind of let it roll off. Um, don't let it bother you. Understand that these people that are saying these hateful comments have most likely been stuck in a room for the last 
year and a half um, yeah. with zero social interaction, um, yeah. nothing going for them in their lives, you know? So like their opinion of you based on a 30 second or 15 second or even up to a minute video really doesn't matter. It's not yeah. you. Like they cannot judge you off of that. Yeah. Um, so like letting that hate just kind of slide. Um, and I'm, I'm not perfect at it still. There's still a comment that'll get through to me when I'm already pissed off. I'm just like, you know what, dude, like you're a <laughs> troll and you're as ugly inside as you are outside. And you know, like, I, <laughs> but I really try not to feed into that. Right. And, yeah. and I feel like the less that I respond to the hateful comments, um, the less that, the less I sort of feed the bad wolf, if you will. A hundred percent. Um, well, and that's so helpful, all of it. And I guess the final question that I would have for you on this, like, do you notice that there's a particular type of content? Like, is it videos of you like doing funny stuff? Is it just the tattoo video? Like what does the best for you? What do you think that people are the most attracted to? Yeah. Um, so for me, I mean, if you look at my profile, you'll, you'll see a very sort of similar style with a lot of the videos, you know, and I do little side things here and there and try to keep it interesting, honestly, more for myself than anybody. Yeah. Um, but you definitely, once you find something that works for you, you kind of have to, um, you don't have to stay in that exact thing. Right. Which I sort of did. And I kind of pigeonholed myself that that way a little bit to where like, I almost sort of have to put out the same type of video now. Mm -hmm. Um, but you do have to sort of make your brand. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so like coming up with your brand and the way you do that, like, I mean, you still have to do trends too. Like if you want to be big on TikTok, you have to have your brand. You have to like do your version of trends. Um, if you can have like your brand be like a couple different sort of formulas for videos, right? If you have like three different formulas, so you got three different types of videos going, plus you're jumping on trends, um, that'll keep it more interesting for you as well as for your viewers. Because um, honestly, like when I try to do something new now, it like it gets hardly any views. And I'm like, oh, I'm stuck, you know, like I have to do the same thing over and over again. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and the other thing being, uh, and you know, Jake, the, uh, the biggest tattoo artist on TikTok, Jake Carmel, he's also become a friend of mine through this. And, uh, he gives me, he gives me tips all the time, you know, cause he's been doing this for over two years now and I've just been in it since March. Um, but he says, dude, like do this for you, like, like post it and then don't worry about the views. Like yeah. literally do, do not worry about the views. Just have yeah. a good time doing this and, and it'll pay off. Yeah. So being true to yourself, having fun with it, serving the niche and the audience, maybe having like a couple different flavors plus the trends mm -hmm. and then yeah. not paying attention to trolls. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, wonderful tips. And I just am so happy for you and all of your success. Where can people find you if they're looking for a tattoo and they're in, well, I guess they don't even have to be in the area. They could travel, but where can people find yeah. you, connect with you and get tattooed by you? Yeah. Um, so my TikTok, obviously my handle is at tattoo underscore Matt. And, um, if you, if you type in tattoo, I think I'm like the top one that comes up in the search anyways. Um, but my Instagram is Matt Vought underscore tattoo. And that's, uh, Matt M A T T V A U G H T underscore tattoo. And, um, and my website, of course, has a consultation form built into it where you can fill it out and we can get the appointment process started. And that's mattbot.com. Um, you can also find my link tree on my Instagram. Um, and as well as travel updates, I will be traveling to a lot of different conventions and guest spots, especially this coming year. So if you don't live in the area and you can't make it out here, I may be coming to your area. So it's good to sort of, you know, keep up to date on that, or at least follow along just so you can see if I'm coming your way. I love it. Well, and I can't wait to come in and sit in the chair or lay on the table. We'll see what I'm in the mood for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, this yeah is I think we got great. you coming in pretty soon too, huh? Yeah. Well, I was going to try to come in. Um, what would that be in like two weeks, but you're doing a guest spot that day. So in San Diego, ah, okay. so yeah. this episode will drop after that. So we're going to miss the San Diego folks, but um, okay. I'm glad that you're traveling around so that you can a beautiful artwork on people all over the country. <laughs> yes, that's the dream.
truly. Well, thank you so much for coming back on, Matt. It's been a true pleasure. And again, if you all did not listen to the interview that dropped yesterday, make sure to do that. Again, I think it is one of the most important, if not the most important interviews I've ever done. So thank you again, Matt. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. What you track grows. Grow what matters with the 90-day cycle to new habits journal and stay focused on what will move your business forward. Pick up your copy today at 90dayhabits.co and use code CITRO, that's C-I-T-R-O, for 10% off. Thank you so much for listening to the show. If today's episode added value to your life in some way, please subscribe, leave a five-star review, and share it with someone who needs this. I'd love to connect with you on Instagram and hear how the show has inspired you. So tag me or slide into the DMs. Find me at Corporate Dropout Official or Alessia Citro. That's A-L-E-S-S-I-A-C-I-T-R-O and two underscores. Until next time, remember that you're a badass. Stay focused, stay hungry, and dare to drop out. <laughs>